Deuteronomy chapter 14 ye are the children of the Lord your God he's talking to the Jews he doesn't mention the children of Israel but there are the children of God what are you gonna do about it? it's been children of Israel children of Israel children of Israel. now they are the children of the Lord your God and God said, if you mess with them, you curse them, I'm going to curse you. If you bless them, I'm going to bless you. And if you deny the fact that Israel is God's chosen people, you're in trouble. You deny the Bible. There are many religions out there that have stolen the promises of the Jews. You shall not cut yourselves, nor make any boldness between your eyes for the dead. So there was a ritual going on among the heathens that they would cut themselves, they would shave their heads, make it look like a little beanie kind of hat, kind of funny because the Jews wear a beanie. And yet the monks will shave their heads in such a way it looks like that. Between your eyes for the dead. You're going to do it just for the dead people. And it's also, I mean, there's other places that applies the tattoos and all that. But for the dead, what's your most popular tattoo but a skull? And when you do get a tattoo, you are cutting yourself into your into your flesh with the needles. But I've never witnessed, and I guarantee probably African nations and uh, other places like that, I guarantee there's probably some rituals that you cut yourself. Because there would, wouldn't be that warning if it was not so. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Jews. So, cutting yourself for the dead and having your hair cut for the dead people is not holy. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a particular people unto himself. You're just supposed to look at that Jew and say, hey, you see that guy over there? That guy's weird. Well, you know what he is? No, he's weird. He's a Jew. Oh, you mean one of them children of, of, of that God over there? Yes. You mean he don't do the same things we do? No. He doesn't have the same God that we have? No. He doesn't go to the same places that we go? No. And yet Christians today have failed that because they do everything that the world does. Talking to a guy the other day, and it's so funny. Everything he wanted to do for the ministry was all worldly and good and fine, but not according to the Bible. Particular people, you're supposed to stand out. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. How you like that? Two verses, chapter 14. The Jew is the people of the God. Don't mess with them. Particular. Huh? Yeah, strange. Peculiar. Peculiar. It, it even says like with street preaching, Paul preaching to the Corinthians, it's foolish. Me standing on the street with an open Bible yelling at people is foolish. Yes, guarantee I said that today or last week. But the message is not foolish. You may look at that Jew and say that haircut that he has and see he's foolish, yes. But the God that he has is not foolish. You're supposed to stand out as a Christian. That, you know what? If somebody is in a desired need, they're coming upon affliction or troubles in their life. They're all going to look at you even if they don't know who you are and say, you know what? You're weird. You're strange. There's, a guy said today to us, when you're here, I feel the Holy Spirit. I know what he meant. And all the people there, you know what? I'm in trouble. I'm in problems. You seem to have that, and to them would be an aura. Something you can do can help. And for all the nation of the world, it's supposed to be that center. You know what the center point of the entire world is? It's Jerusalem. Once they get built. It. So let's see about the weird people and one of their ways. They have a law that's written in stone. First of all, they came out of the world, Egypt. All these signs, wonders, and terrible acts of their God, my God. 
Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. Now, wouldn't it have been great if God would have just left it like that? Okay. And again, we're dealing with the guy Saturday, and the standard is the Bible. Friday. What's good and bad is what the Bible says. God says a bondable thing, and he's going to give you a list of good things and a bondable, a bondable things. So let's see first, first Timothy 4, 3. In the church. Because what we're going to read is going to be jeopardized in the church age. We'll start in verse 1, talking about the church age. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, that's today, some shall depart from the faith, yes. Giving heed to seducing spirits, Paul said there's another spirit, and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, yes. Having their conscience shared with a hot iron, that's what I was talking to my wife today about in the car. About the person's conscience. Forbidding to marry. You know anybody who forbids, forbids to marry? Ah, you don't know anybody like that. They forbid to marry, then they go after your little boys. Maybe you can tell them to go get married and leave your boys alone. Commanded to abstain from meat. Now, there's a hospital here. I go in. And I get in there, and I can't order pork. I got to get a turkey sausage in the morning. I can't get a pork sausage. Why is that? Because we're, what we're going to study in the Old Testament in a moment. But what does Paul say about meat? Certain lobsters and crabs and scallops and pork and bacon. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe. I believe. Do you believe? Then thanksgiving. And know the truth. So, let's see over here in Genesis. I didn't mark this one. Genesis. Noah comes out of that ark. Nine. I think it's nine. Flood six. Seven. Eight. Nine. All right, now what we just read in Timothy is the church age, okay? What we're going to read in Genesis 9 is long before Abraham's even thought of. And probably his father, his grandfather, his great-grandfather, his great-great-grandfather, and all that. They're not even thought of yet. Nation of Israel, Jews, unheard of in Genesis 9. So verse 1, And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Exactly what he said to Adam. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. Why? Because we're going to be able to chase them with forks and knives in a minute. And upon every fowl of the air we can eat. Fowls. Chicken. Upon all that moveth upon the earth. And upon all the fishes of the sea. Ooh. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Did you get that? Even as the green herb. Remember God told Adam, you can eat any tree in that garden. God has given Noah the ability now to say, you can have pork spare ribs with green beans and a nice salad and potatoes. And there's no restriction. Now, when we get to Leviticus chapter 14, to the children of God, the Jews, who are to be a strange, particular people, weird, God is going to stand them out by a diet. And I've heard some people say, well, you know, the, the, the seafood in this area is bad, and it, it's poison. Uh, no, no, no. Get rid of that garbage. Throw it in the garbage can. Because what we're going to read, what the Jews can't eat, The nations around Israel devouring and they're salivating. Now let's go to Acts chapter 10 before we jump into this. And 10, we're, we're going to break down some of the chapter, but we're not going to read it all. 
But Acts chapter 10, something happens. And let's look at Acts 10, 1. We're going to see, and we're not going to look at the Roman Catholic, which we're going to look at him, but that's not, that's not the subject of today's study, Romans, uh, Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 9, Paul got saved. In, Jacks, in, Jacks, in Acts chapter 8, an Ethiopian unit gets saved as close as the possibility of a church age saint. So Acts chapter 1, and there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. That is a Gentile. He's Italian. Can you imagine what would be on his dinner plate seven days a week? All right. Now, what, what God's going to do is he's going to send a Jew to Cornelius' house. And that Jew is going to have to eat at his house because Jesus told his disciples, when you go into a house and they put food before you, eat it. But we got a problem now. Here's a Gentile. He's not under the law. The Jews were under the law. So let's look what happened. Uh, verse 10. No, verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journeys and drew nigh the city, Peter, Jewish man, went upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, they're fixing dinner, he fell in a trance. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him. As it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down the earth. Wherein, pick up where we're going to be reading today, wherein were all men of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild, get that wild beast, that's going to show up in a moment, and creepy things, get that, and falls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, eat, and kill, and eat. Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have eat, neither eaten anything that is common or uncommon. Peter obeyed the law we're going to read today. And you may say what what we wrote in Paul, that, that's not applicable, and, and that's not to the point. Let's see what God tells Peter, a law-biting Jew who is now saved under grace. Let's see what God tells him. And the voice spake unto him, wait a minute, uh, and Paul says, not, I won't eat anything common or clean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God has cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times. And then the men of Cornelius comes to Peter and says, Listen, Cornelius has sent us to come get you. Peter goes with him. He's thinking about what's going on. The Holy Spirit says, Just go. He enters the house of Cornelius. They get saved. They get baptized. And now Peter is sitting down having an Italian meal. And like, wow, what did we miss? And Paul says, if you can thank God for it and you can bow your head and say, Lord God. Now listen, I have people debated me all the time. I've gotten to fight a Muslim over pigs at a store that I would deliver papers to. And every time he would give me some kind of fact of knowledge about a pig or so, or, you know, the mother pig will eat her babies and if they die, it's fine. I can bow my head over a pork and, and eat it and thank God for it. Now, some people's stomach can't take it. And if your stomach and your body can't take it, don't eat it. But don't put Deuteronomy 14 restrictions by your religion on me, where Paul says, I can enjoy it. The Jews. Do you think children of the Lord would violate the Bible by celebrating the, the seventh, Sabbath day? And not follow the Sabbath day completely, servile work? When they have their nurses and their doctors and their cafeteria staff working on the seventh day. And I brought that to one of the, the attention of one of their ministers that came and visited me in the hospital. And he couldn't answer me. I said, wait a minute. I said, first of all, you drove here. You're not supposed to drive. Didn't they yell at Jesus for going so far? But the law says, okay, the Jews are given a dietary law. But in the New Testament, 
Acts, and Timothy. Before the Jew, Noah, we can eat the meat. And they'll say to you, another thing is a person gave to me, our teeth are designed for vegetables and fruit. Well, no, duh. That's what God designed Adam to do, eat fruits and vegetables, wasn't he? And I'm not joking. When God said put seven animals that are clean on that ark, why? Because now you can take that pig, now you can take that cow, and you can cut them open and make a hamburger. You can have pork chops. And when Noah got out of that boat, he took some of the animals, he sacrificed them to God. Well, he needed extra for the sacrifice. And then to give to Mrs. Noah, say, here, God says we can eat this now. Chop it up and put it on the grill. These are the beasts which ye shall eat for the Jews. The ox. I would assume that's kind of beef. The sheep, I don't know what they call sheep meat, but good, lamb. lamb, and the goat, the heart, that's the animal, not the thing that goes boom, 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 boom. Is there anything wrong with eating the heart before the law, during the law, and after the law? Yeah. The Bible says you're not to eat meat. I mean, you're not to eat the blood. What is in charge of the blood? The heart. The robot, that's not Sears. And the fallow deer. I don't know what fallow is, but deer. Venison is good. And it's good for the Bible. The wild goat. Did you get that wild in Timothy? First Timothy chapter 4, where it said wild animal. And the pie grad. That is a questionable fowl. But no one knows what it is. And the wild ox. And the chag. Maya's, Chamea's, it's a goat type animal. And every beast that parts the hoof, now you gotta look at their paws, they're gonna look at their feet. And cleaveth the cleft into two paw, claws, and cheweth the cud, that means they got multiple stomachs, among the beasts, they that, that ye shall eat. So they're gonna be cloven footed. And they're going to chew the cut. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cut. They chew the cut. It says you can, those that chew the cut, but these you can't. Or of them that divide the cloven hook. They got the cloven hook. As the camel. You can't eat a camel. You can't eat the hair. And they can't eat the coney. Now, what on earth is a coney? In Coney Island, New York, it is so named because the island was was massive wild rabbits running around. Now, when I looked that up, I thought it was going to be bird. You know, island in New England, you got seagulls, you got all kinds of fowl life, but it, for rabbits, it's a rabbit. For they chew the cud. Oh, see, now that's the law there. You could chew the cud, but divide not the hoof. They got paws. And when you go into Leviticus, you find out any animal that has paws, cats and dogs, are unclean. But divideth not the hoof, therefore they are unclean unto you. Now, I've had rabbit before. Never had camel. At least I don't know I've had camel. You never know if some of these stores you eat at. And the swine, that's the pig, because it divideth the hoof. You look at his feet, he's cloven the hoof. But his problem is he cheweth not the cud. It is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Carcass. Now what's the problem with that one there? When Jesus told us the story of the prodigal son, where does he end up? In a pig pine. He was not supposed to be there. That made him unclean. When the maniac of dairy got right, what was the problem in that situation there? They were raising pigs by the thousands. You weren't supposed to do that as a Jew. So you see, in Jesus' time, they were violating the law. 
These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. So Peter, James, John, and Andrew are proper by fishing and catching fish and selling and eating fish. And fish was one of the meals that Jesus gave the disciples. Lobsters, oysters, crabs, shellfish are not in the Jewish diet because they don't have fins and they don't have scales. And yet, I can sit down today with a lobster meal or a crab meal. I can have a, a, a crab a sandwich, crab meat sandwich, and bow my head and say, Lord God, thank you, and, and there's no penalty against me. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing today, too. We're not under the law. But the law is advisable. And as a proper witness to a Jewish person, as a Christian, if you are put in an atmosphere where you got to sit down with a meal with a Jewish person, I will honor Deuteronomy 14. I am no way going to offend that Jew in any respect. I am not going to curse that Jew by offending him by his belief in the law. I will forboo the pork sausage. I will have a hamburger, which is beef, called ham. Really mess you up. Or something on that menu that I can eat without offending the Jew that I may witness to him. So, the seafood department here, verse 9, it's just, it's got to have fins and it's got to have scales. I don't know what all the animals there are. And whatsoever has fins or scales, you may not, whatsoever has not fins and scales, you may not eat it. It's unclean unto you. Of all clean birds, ye shall eat fowl. But these are they which ye shall not eat. So God puts out, verse 4, these are the beasts which ye shall eat. Verse 3, those shall not eat any abominable thing. And God's going to tell you. The Bible is the manner for the Jewish person on what is clean and unclean. Now let's look at some of these things. For these are they of which ye shall not eat. The eagle. The eagle, the bald eagle, the symbol of America, is an unclean bird. Your national symbol in the Bible is unclean. And the ostrich, and the osprey, and the guild, and the kite bird, not that thing flies with humans, and the vulture. I guarantee I know why the vulture is on that list. Ever sat inside a row and seen some of the stuff they eat? After his kind. So any vulture. Any vulture is animal is unclean. Every raven. After his kind. Blackbird. And the wise old owl. You know. The wise owl. He's unclean. He eats rats and rodents. He's good for your barn. But he's not good for eating. And the night hawk. And the cockle. And the hawk. And his kinds, all hawks. The little owl. And the great owl. Three owls. And the swan. Hey, look, I didn't ever, you look at a swan. I never ever looked at a swan like, hmm, I want to eat that. And the pelican. They're down here in Florida and they, they, you can't eat them. They, they're unclean. The gear eagle. And the comorant. And the stork. The one that brings the baby by stories and tales and lies. Is unclean and you'll see him later on in the Bible picture with two winged women that are unclean associated with Babel the heron after her kind and the lap wing and the bat God you made a big mistake that bat is a mammal it's not a bird <laughs> I love when God does that I wish he put platypus in the Bible. That's one of those animals God says, okay, you want to believe in evolution? Platypus. Explain it. 
the big fish in Jonah, and yet Jesus said it's a whale. Now you got a bat listed in birds. So when they tell you the bat is a mammal and the whale is a mammal, I'm going to say God said it's a big fish and God said it's a bird. Oh, you're wrong. When I get to the test in heaven and God grades my paper and I say the bat is a bird, I'm going to get that correct. You're going to get it wrong. I believe the Bible. Now, he may give birth to life birth or whatever the stuff is. God says he's a bird. Jesus Christ, who is God, says that whale, even though it gives life birth, that whale is a fish. Jonah, Holy Spirit. Every creeping thing that flying, <laughs> that's every creep, that's the cockroaches down here. Grasshoppers. Certain kinds of them, because John the Baptist is eating locusts. Flies. It's unclean unto you. They shall not be eaten. And Leviticus gives you more in debt. Let's see. Leviticus, Leviticus 11 gives you more great detail than Deuteronomy. But of the clean falls ye may eat. And you know what's interesting? The only place you see chicken, when Jesus is describing Israel, he says, as a chicken would call her broad under her wings, but you would not. And they say there are more chickens than humans, and I think every human can have five chickens, whatever, unless you're in uh, England today, where they don't have enough chickens, because they despise God and His Word. You would figure in this list that God would say as far as that chicken, go ahead. But he's not listed as the unclean. And all the things you can do with chicken, all the things you can do with venison, all the things you can do with the beef and the ox. I'm not sure about what things you can do with the sheep or the goat. I never cooked those things. I've had the sheep, they look like the pork chop kind of thing. But there's so many ways you can do with the clean animals for a meal. You shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. So you're going hunting. And you're walking a path and here's a dead deer already. You can't eat it. You don't know what it died of. You don't know how long it's been sitting there. Once it dies, it starts decaying. It starts having diseases in that flesh. You got to do that butchering of the animal in a timely proper fashion that is in the that is in thy gates that ye may eat it or thou mayest sell it wait a minute I missed the part thou shalt give it unto the stranger that's in thy gate you can give it to a gentile hey I found this laying along the path I know you eat this roadkill here you can have it I can't as a Jew me, I wouldn't eat roadkill, but then again, I don't know if I've ever go all the restaurant. And thou mayest sell it unto an alien, a Gentile, not people from Mars. So when America does use the word illegal alien, that's a Bible word. That is someone not in relation to the Jews, not in relation to the land. When Joseph was put in the pit, and here comes these Ishmaelites, they're alien. And they pick up Joseph, and they sell him to the Ishmaelites. And there could be Ishmaelites, there could be nomads coming around. They come to the land, hey, listen, we got some meat, it, it, it's dead, it died in my field. Do you guys eat this stuff? Do you guys? Yeah, we. okay, here, I'll sell it to you. But as a Jew, you can't eat it. But you can sell it. For thou art a holy people in the Lord thy God. You don't eat dead meat already dead. Now I've talked to people who have, I know people who have eaten roadkill. And they sort of up and down. It, 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 gooey to me, but. Did you see that dead animal on the street in Jerusalem? Or the cities of Israel? Yeah, I'm going to take that because those Jews can't eat that. I'll take that. I'm a Gentile. I'll enjoy it. They won't do nothing with it. See how they're particular people? Thou shalt not see that's sodden or boil a kid, 
a child, a, a, a baby animal in his mother's milk. So you don't take uh, venison and cook it in, in a cow's milk. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. That's law. Yeah, okay. You can you? All right. Yes, his mother's not in his mother's milk. Okay. Not even her cooking in the milk. Yeah. Thou shalt truly tithe. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Thou shalt truly tithe all the. I can't even talk now. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. What is that? All right. You plant tomatoes. When you pick your tomatoes, 10% goes to God. You put green beans. 10% goes to God. Wheat, barley, olives, grapes. That the field bringeth forth year by year. Now that is not, that is not church age. You know I can prove that's church age? I'm a born again Bible believing Christian. I preach the gospel. I, I witness, I tell people, I try to do what God tells me to do. And you give me a plot of land to grow a garden, I will fail that verse. Because if I were going to bring a tithe to God from my garden, I will have to bring him weeds. I have never ever had the ability to grow a pure garden without the weeds. And I've plucked them and everything like that. That's not church age. We're not under tithes in the church age. We are in offerings and givings of a willing heart. And you see the promise here? Do you see verse 22? Do you recognize that verse? If you give God $10, he'll give you $100. That's the prosperity gospel that is lying on televisions and radios today that God will give you an increase if you give their money to them. There it is. In black and white. I'm reading here. I have a note here that Jews had two plates, one for meat and the second for dairy. No butter with no butter with meat and bread and meat sandwich. That, and that will go back in a reference. I wish I wrote clear. That goes back in uh, verse 21. They won't even mix butter with, with the meat. And they will not have a meat sandwich. I don't know where they would get the meat sandwich on that one. But they won't put cheese with ham. But well, they can't have ham. Turkey. This is the word you're going to see in here is turkey. Oh, turkey, sir. But the Bible, they have butter. They have milk and butter. That's, that's interesting, though. No. Uh, yeah. You can get milk and Yeah. They probably can't mix them because if you can't mix two gar two garments together, you can't mix. It. See, that's another thing with the gar well, with. It could be the mama's baby that is on the plate, and you can't mix her milk with the. And the reason why they don't put butter with it because it could be the mother's milk. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay, that was great. I like that. Okay. So verse twenty-two is your prosperity gospel, and that's not church age. Today, it's not tithe. It's what you want to give. What your heart says about giving. I, I just I give above. That's all I'm going to say. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. Okay, verse 23, we've looked at this before. It's come up twice. We've got, let's read it proper. Thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. That would be in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. That's Jerusalem. The tithe of thy corn, wheat, of thy wine, and of thy oil, and the firstlings of thy herds. Remember all those, those first clean animals had to be brought to Jerusalem and sacrificed. Of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Obedience always brings the fear of God. And the fear of God helps you to be obedient to God. And if the way be too far for thee, you're way up in Dan, you're way down in Beersheba. 
so that thou art not able to carry it. Or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, Jerusalem. Jerusalem's on a high mountain. When the Lord thy God has blessed thee, thou shalt turn thou, then thou shalt turn it to money. And bind up the money in thy hand. And thou shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God has chosen. <coughs> Sell it, get the money, then go to Jerusalem. And thou shalt bestow thy money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Romans 7 7. Lusting is coveting, coveting is lusting. Yeah, I got that verse down there. Now, where do you see the problem of this in the life of Jesus? You got those tables set up in the thing. They know the money. They're bringing the money. You bribe the doves and, and extraordinary, righteous, money, profiting thing. Whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. For oxen. They would have had oxen there. Scripture is scripture. Jesus said the table of the doves too. For sheep. They would have had sheep for sale. They would have had the sheep down from... from uh, Bethlehem. Bethlehem's not too far from Jerusalem. Or for wine. Oh. Or for strong drink. Did you get that? God, are you telling me I can go get drunk? Look at, at the end of verse 23 again. To fear the Lord thy God. Strong drink is there. You are in Jerusalem. You are before the temple. You are before the priest. You are before the king. If you fear God, you're going to have the taste of the strong drink, but I don't think you're going to get drunk if you love God and want to do right. Do you believe that God has that verse there? Wine and for strong drink. It's there. But you've got to do it before God. That's not us today. We don't go to Jerusalem. If you go to Jerusalem today, you're going to run into a Gentile God with a uh, the dumb of the rock. That's not us. That's not Jewish. Or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there. Here we go. Underline this. Triple online. If you want to get drunk. If you really want to do it. If you want to lust. Eat there before the Lord thy God. He'll keep you intact. He'll keep you in line if you fear him. And thou shalt rejoice thou and thy household. And it's funny, it's there. I mean, you cannot deny the fact that there it is. But when Moses gives these people that thing right there, what has happened to the children of Israel that they witness? Oh, God, well, Moses, who do you think you are? We're better priests than you. Boom! The earth opens up and swallows them. Hey, by who? Give me that liar. Moses, you want to send a couple men in there, get their get their clothes, that their ashes. Fire starts falling down from heaven. Snakes are coming and biting them. There is complete darkness on one side of the area and no darkness on the other side. There are animals dropping dead. There are flies. There are locusts. There is uh, boils. There is all kinds of terror and wonders of God and you're going to serve God and your heart is right with God and that God is so mighty and so wonderful with signs, wonders, and terror. I better watch what I do. How's that? See, that's when you can't read America's and, oh, let's go get drunk. You've got to look back all the way to Exodus and see what the children of Israel have seen and see what God has done to their rebellion, to their sin, to their iniquity. And when they're going to... Better be careful. 
I don't want to make God angry. That's what it is. That's eat there before the Lord thy God. That's a reverential fear. Now, when you're in carnalness, as they were when Jesus was there, I guarantee where people were buying the hooch and getting drunk and didn't care. Until Jesus came in and kicking all the tables over. And knocking things over. Imagine if you're doing a church house today with all the nonsense. Yard sales, car washes. Man. And the Levite, that's the priest. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests, but they are still of Levi. Whether they be classified as a priest or of that family. That is within thy gates. Remember, they, they didn't have a land. They were amongst the children of Israel. Thou shalt not forsake him. You take care of him. That's what you ought to do with your pastor. That's not happening. Thou shalt not forsake him. You ought to do that for your pastor. you got a right, true pastor that really loves you, prays over you, visits you, and tears over you. Help him. Take care of him. Pray for him. For he has no part nor inheritance with it. He doesn't get a land. This land is not his land. He can't sing, this is my land. This is no. All he can sing is, this is your land. He has no land. And the Levite. Oh, wait a minute. And at the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thy increase the same year, and shalt lay it up within thy gates. And that goes to the Levites, and that goes to the priest. That's their due. That's their hire. And the Levite, because he has no part nor inheritance with thee, that's a parenthesis note, and the stranger, that's the non-Gentile, I mean, that's the Gentile, the non-Jew, and the fatherless, they have no father, and the widow, she has no husband, or no wife, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat, and be satisfied with, wait a minute, at the end of three years thou shalt bring forth all the tithes of thy increase, the same year, and shall lay up within thy gates and Levite, because he has no part in the inheritance of the land, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall eat, and be satisfied. There's the people by their offerings taking care of other people amongst their people. There are people working and earning and bringing their tithes and there are people who can't make a living can't afford to make a living living off those people who have worked in the Bible I said there are people working bringing their tithes when there are people amongst their brethren who can't make a living and you're helping them The widow had no way. They didn't hire women back then. There's fatherless children. They don't have a dad that brings income. They shall come and eat, be satisfied. God said help those now help the poor. Now I'm not talking about people who are poor just because they want to be poor and they want to spend their money on drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. They're poor because they just cannot get above the economy. And they're trying and they're just not making it. And God says help them. Now notice it gives them food, they don't give them money. It says it increase that year. Need to eat. My wife, when she helps people, she gives them food, canned foods of canola uh, uh, bars, or whatever she can get to put in a bag with gospel tracts. And they're serious, they need to eat. And shall eat and be satisfied that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all thy work of thy hand, which thou doest. Now that's Old Testament. I've seen God bless Christians who help other Christians 
in need and time. I've seen God bless and help. He's not obligated. But things we do like that as Christians, that goes to the account books of the judgment seat of Christ. There are truly people out there who just cannot make it for whatever reason. Help them. And then they're just complete deadbeats. I've had people where I've offered to buy them a meal and they've taken it. I've had people where I offered to go buy them a meal. Oh, I just want the cash. I'll get it. No, 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 no. I've only given money once, I believe, to one man, one person. And that's food. I get you food. I get you water. You gotta help. And they had that diet that people would look at them and say they don't eat that. Man, you know what they're missing? Hey, but have you heard the story of their God? Have you heard what God has done for them? Do you see how they help their own? Do you see they go once a year to their city of their God, uh, Jerusalem, wherever it is, and they're just happy, they're just rejoiceful before their God. And the Bible says three times a year, when those three times, no enemy is going to come into your field during that time. And there are Gentiles that look at that, look at them and say, there's something weird. And in the times of troubles, in the times of hardship, you ought to have this life separated, unspotted by the world. So when somebody's looking for the hope, somebody's looking for the way, they're looking for the truth, they're looking for the life, either they know you are weird enough, or they have a friend that says, hey, I got this. You got troubles? If you go over here, I know this family over here, they're involved, they can help you. We've had our table at the flea market. We've had people come up to Someone told me to come over here. And I think one time was they said we had hats or something. Well, we don't got hats, but we, I mean, you want something, it's got over there, table number. And we've had that. We've seen that. People come to us. But when you get spotted with the world and you got a worldly life, you just look like anybody else. Now, a quote from a guy I heard Friday. About that. Oh, this guy, he's so great and all that. And it took me seven years to realize when I look at the lyrics, there actually had God in the lyrics. Yeah, he's been so worldly, you didn't see it. Our lives should be, even in the New Testament as a Christian, our lives should still be particular people. The Bible says, I believe he even uses that expression. You're supposed to stand up for God. You're supposed to be that light on a hill. Many Christians are that tower. There's the tower, but there's no place for the light bulb. And when you're not a when you're a lighthouse that has no light, you're just a tower. That's all you are. 